You're listening to the weekly Parsha podcast with Ari Goldwag, recorded with Hashem's never ending assistance in Ramah Bishemish Israel 5783, 2023. This week we do not have a Parsha. We will be reading Torah portions that are related to the concept of Pesach, Passover. I'd like to share with you a thought on Pesach, something from the Medrash, a beautiful idea. You know, one of the themes of the, of the Haggadah, which we're going to read tonight, the Pesach Seder, is the theme of of course, redemption, of course, leaving Egypt. But not only is the redemption something that happened in those times, that happened 3,300 years ago, when the Jewish people left Egypt, but it's also something that, Mirza Shem, God willing, very soon, we're all going to experience with the full redemption of the Jewish people when we're gathered back into Eretz Yisrael, all of us, when we are going to see the building of the Beis HaMegdash, the Temple. And so, there are a lot of hints Within the Haggadah, if you look around and you'll you'll see them, there are hints to the, of course, there's explicitly all that happened then, but there's also a lot of hints to what's going to happen in the future. For example, Kaisha is the fifth cup, right? We have Vitsesi, Vitsalti, Vigalti, Vilakakti, and then Vehevesi, right? The final bringing of Am Yisrael, which has not yet been completed, but it's something that's going to be in the future. Elio Hanav, Elijah the prophet, represents that idea. He's the Mavasar Hagaul. He's the one who announces that the redemption has arrived. So that's just one example of many examples. And if you look for it, you're going to find it within the Haggadah, within the Seder. You'll find many hints to the future Geula, to the future redemption. So I'd like to share with you something. And this is very much connected to, to this, this, intimate, this intimate connection between the Exodus, the redemption then, the future redemption, which will hopefully be very soon. So, Dabar Achar Chodesh HaZalachem, says the Medrash, brings the Pasuk. The Pasuk says, the first mitzvah that the Jewish people received, the first obligation was, HaChodesh HaZalachem, this month, the month of Nisan, that we are in currently, the month of Pesach. This is your month. This is the month of redemption. This is when the Jewish people become a nation. This is when creation actually occurred. As we as we hold this Gemara in, in Rosh Hashanah, Daf Aleph, this is your month. This is a special month. This is the Jewish people's month, the month of, of renewal, the month of Hischadshus, of new fruits coming out, right? The, the green, all of the rain from the whole entire winter starts to seep into the earth and produce all the green that we see. So, HaKadosh HaZelachem, what is this idea? It's very much connected, of course, to Pesach, this is your month, on the 10th of the month, you're supposed to bring, you're supposed to set aside a carbon Pesach, an animal for a carbon Pesach, for the, the Passover sacrifice. What is the concept of HaChodesh HaZelachem? This is your month. So the Medrash tells us that the word HaChodesh, which means your month, also means, it's a word of Chadash, which means new. Pesach says in Yishai, in Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 9, HaRishayna is Hinei Bo, the first ones have come, the Chadoshes Animag, and I'm saying something new. The Medrash says, when Mashiach comes, when the Messiah arrives, is there going to be something new in the world? We find the verse in Koelis in Ecclesiastes, King Solomon tells us that all that was is going to be. So the Medrash says, as I'm unfortunate to explain it, the Medrash says that there's going to be something new when Mashiach comes, but it's going to really be not so much new as a renewal of something that already that already was. Okay, so let's hear this. So we had a redemption in the past, and there's going to be a future redemption. There's going to be something that seems to be new, but really it's a renewal of something that already was. Let's see what this means. We find that there are ten things that Hashem is going to renew, that He already brought into the world, but He brings a new aspect of them, a new deeper aspect, a, a new light. He infuses His light into them in a deeper way. Let's see, what are these ten things? Right, and it could be, as my son Moshe Dov pointed out as we learned this, it could be these correspond to the ten Ma'amorim. It's worth checking out how it corresponds to the ten statements that Hashem made when He created the world. The first one is, there should be light, right? The first thing here is, Hashem is going to be the light of the world Himself. 
the sun will not be that which provides the light. Right? The end of the verse is, instead Hashem will be the one who provides the light. But does that mean that there won't be a sun? So Medrash says, It can't be that Hashem provides the light directly because we can't look at God, we can't see God. What it means is that Hashem will infuse more of His light into the sun. He takes the sun, which already exists, He's going to give it 49 times the brightness. The light of the moon, what we currently have as the moon, is going to be seven times what it is. And, or I'm sorry, it will be the light of the moon will be like the light of the sun, and the light of the sun will be seven times seven more. 49 times more. So now, it's going to be so intense. Imagine the sun is hot right now. Imagine how hot it will be when Hashem allows it to, to come out. No, says the Medrash. There's going to be a special power of the sun which is going to be revealed. Or perhaps we could think about the sun and vitamin D and how it, it indeed heals already. There's going to be a deeper healing that comes. The sun will have this power. You'll walk out into the sun. A person who's sick will walk out into the sun and he'll be cured. Shenemer. The sun will shine, those who fear me, for those who fear me. It's a sun of curing, a sun that takes away those illnesses. But that's not the only thing that Hashem is going to do. It's just the first of many things that Hashem is going to cure when it comes time for Mashiach, for the Messiah's arrival. And we get a hint to all of these things in the times of Mitzrayim. In Yitzhak Mitzrayim, there was a revelation of Hashem's light. Of course, that revelation, there's a sun that, that's opened up and shines on the Jewish people. Think about the plague of darkness. They still had light, the Jewish people. So there was a special light that was revealed for us, and it was darkness for the Mitzrayim, for the Egyptians. And there's going to be a parallel type of light which cures the tzaddikim, and it causes destruction for those who are wicked. Another aspect of, his, of this is that there's going to be life-giving waters from Jerusalem. This will also cure anyone who had who has a sickness. Pasuk in Ezekiel, chapter 40, 47, verse 9, speaks about a, uh, a river that pours forth from Jerusalem that brings life. Hashlishis. Another interesting thing, instead of fruit trees providing fruit just once a year, this, everything is going to be sped up. All the processes are going to be much quicker. It's going to be once a month. It's going to be once a month. Every single month you're going to have fruits producing fruit. And this too, these fruits also, Will, will be something that cure a person. And the ACIC points out, I mean, we already cured them with the sun. We already cured them with the water. What are, we, what are we curing them with right now? So he explains that this is talking about somebody who was born with some kind of body part missing or some kind of uh, intrinsic issue like he couldn't, he couldn't see, he couldn't hear. That will be cured with these special fruits. Okay, so it's very interesting. So all of these different things, brings a pasuk also in Ezekiel Chadash There's the waters that are coming out of the mikdash. We mentioned that already in the second point. They come and they provide water for the fruits, and the fruits also serve to cure the human being. So we have this whole world, which is imperfect, which has problems, which has sicknesses, which has imperfections. And all of this is going to be purified by Hashem, right? Where's the water coming from? It's coming from Jerusalem, from the place where Hashem reveals Himself the most. It's coming from the sun. It's coming from the light of Hashem, which is filtered through the sun. It's coming through the water into the fruit. And the fruit still, each time, each at, at every level, it's HaKadosh Baruch Hu's light. It's His Shefa, it's his, the influx that He wants to give to us to purify us, to perfect us, to take away our Chisreinus, to take away our lacks, our imperfections. All of this is what we're aiming for and hoping for. 
If there was any city that was destroyed, it will be rebuilt. Even Stom and Amora, which represent the greatest decadence of mankind, the greatest negative forces in the world. Nevertheless, Hashem will remove all negative forces such that you will be able to find the good even in something that was so evil and so negative. They'll return to their former state. So the Menomora, as the Pasuk tells us, was a place which was on a very fertile area. The, what's today the Yam HaMelach, the Salty Sea, was originally a, 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 a very fertile area which provided water all around it, just like in Egypt, which is provided for by the Nile River. It will return to its former state. That which caused great destruction, Sodom and Amora, will be returned. There will be a tikkun for them, a chamishi shubaynes Yerushalayim be'avin sapir. Says the Medrash, the fifth thing, and that is that Jerusalem will be built with sapphire stone. It's not clear exactly what this means. Shenemar yinei anoichim marvitz papucha manayach yusiv esamti kad koishim shosayach vaisan avonim iris kashemesh. What is the sapphire stone? We do see perhaps a reference to it in the in the in that which the Jewish people saw their view of Hashem as it were kibiyachol. They didn't see Hashem. We can't see anything physical. But they did see Evan Sapir, Sapphire Stone, in that vision. Also Yechezkel, Ezekiel saw. So there's going to be this revelation through the Jewish people that shines. Those stones will shine like the sun. The nations of the world will come and they will see the honor of the Jewish people. There won't be any question who belongs, who belongs here, who belongs, let's say, in Harabayis, it's the Jewish people who belong here. It's the Jewish people who belong in the land of Israel. No other nation. We are the chosen ones. It will become clear. The nations of the world will go by our light. But where is that light coming from again? It's the light of Hashem being revealed at a greater, in a deeper way, to a greater extent, in the world through the Jewish people. In this, we are like the, what the sun is to the world in a certain sense. We also will be the ones who will guide all of the nations of the world in their relationship with Hashem. The sixth aspect is that we find that animals also, instead of being predatory animals, the the cow and the and the dove, the bear, are usually at odds. A, a, a bear can be a predatory animal, but they, all the animals will will. Not just, and it's not, as the Mephoshim well, explained, it's not just a mushal, it's not just a, an analogy for the nations of the world, as the Pasuk of, of the, the, the lion and the lamb. Right? That's, a, that's an analogy for the nations of the world, that everyone will get along. But even the animals themselves will also get along. There's going to be a covenant God is going to bring all of the animals in the world, all of the birds, all of the different beasts, and they together will join in the service of Hashem, right? Just as it was supposed to be. Adam Harishan, before the chay, before the sin, one of the first things he did was give the animals names. What was the idea? Because each of those animals had a very specific and important job in the service of Hashem. They were supposed to help us. They were supposed to help mankind, and they will do that in the future. So we'll return to this amazing state. There won't be any more sadness in the world. There won't be any more complaints or calling out and crying. As the Pesach says in Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 19, We won't hear any more complaints, any more crying. The ninth is that there's no more death in the world. Hashem will take away the embarrassment of his nation. Hashem will take away the concept of death. Right? All of this goes together. And then what's the embarrassment of his nation? It means that throughout the centuries, there, there have been Christians who came, and the Arabs who came, and said that they replaced us as the chosen people of Hashem. That embarrassment goes along with the concept of death. Right? There won't be any more death because there won't be any more sin. There won't be any more negativity in the world. All these things will be rectified. That's what Mashiach, that's what the Messianic age looks like. And by the way, this is what we touched and we tasted when the Jewish people left Egypt. Right? So there was there was a revelation of Hashem's light in the world. The Jewish people became the chosen nation for all the world to see. 
All the other nations rejected the Torah, rejected receiving the light of Hashem, but we chose to receive it. And indeed, our, our sages tell us that they returned to a state of Adam Arish and Kodam Achet, of, of the first man before the sin at Mount Sinai, which was the purpose of the Exodus. Why do we leave Egypt? Why are we eating matzah tonight? Why are we... What's, what's this all about? It's about getting to Har Sinai, receiving the Torah, getting to Eretz Yisrael, building the base of Bechira, building the base of Hamidosh, the Temple. Right? L'shan Abba Yishalayim, it's all about this rectification. We're all thinking about what happened then, thinking about how it applies in the future. Just like at Har Sinai, what happened? There was no more death. The angel of death was defeated at that moment. What happened? We sinned. We brought back the angel of death. So just like it was then, it's going to be Nishadish in the future with Mashiach and Messiah's arrival. Not only won't we be crying if there's there won't be any troubles, but maybe we'll just be in a in a static state without joy. No, says the Madrash. The final point is that everything will be there won't be groaning, there won't be any negativity. We will Excuse me, will only be joyous. Salah kol smechim shenemar, as the pasuk says also in Yeshaya, Isaiah chapter thirty-five, verse ten. Ufduye Hashem Yeshuvun, uvod siyam berina. Those who were redeemed by Hashem will return to the land of Israel. Uvod siyam, they will come to Jerusalem. They will come to the mountain of Hashem with great joy. So, what are we looking for? What is the Exodus supposed to? What is the story? that we're reading together, we're studying together tonight. What are we doing? What are we trying to impart to our children? What are we looking for? What we're looking for, what we're after here, is a vision of what happened then, and we need to experience it ourselves wide, so that we know that this is something that we're going to be zeichet to, and Hashem are going to merit very soon. And this is what it looks like. It looks parallel to what happened then. There's going to be an awesome joy. Can you imagine the Jewish people, slaves for 210 years in Egypt? What a terrible experience it was. But can you imagine the joy that they had when they left Egypt? Can you imagine the intense joy they had in the salvation of Hashem when Hashem revealed Himself, provided for them, struck down their enemies, and, and brought them out of Egypt, walked through the Yamsuf, walked through the, the sea, on dry land. Incredible, incredible experience. This is something that we need to relive. Why? Because it's really a preparation. It's really a preparation for where we're headed. What it's going to look like, we just read about. But this is, an, this is just an opportunity for us, such an awesome opportunity for us to try to get a feeling for what it's like to leave Egypt. Try to get a feeling for what it's like to walk into a state of redemption. And of course, it should inspire us. It should inspire us, as I've said so many times, to want to be in Eretz Yisrael, to want to come to the holy places, to Yushalayim, L'shana HaBab Yushalayim. We want to be in Jerusalem next year. That's not just something that, you know, it's something we've been saying for 2,000 years, but it's something that's possible for every single one of us today. We can all be focused on how do we get here? How do we get here? How do we get to Eretz Yisrael? How do we get to Beis HaBechira? How do we get to Beis HaMikdosh? How do we get here so that Mir Tashem Soon, soon, Karbanis will be able to bring the sacrifices. The Karban Pesach is important to remember. The Karban Pesach, which is really the center, it's called Pesach, is the name of the holiday. The Karban Pesach, the sacrifice, the Paschal Lamb, is missing, or Gidi, or goat, as it may, as it may be, depending on what you choose. But it's missing. We don't have it. We don't have the center of Pesach, what it's about. We need to think about how do we get there. How do we get there? How do we envision? The message just described to us as we're going over, maybe taking notes, thinking about what does it look like? Where are we headed? Only with vision. Only with vision and a wish. L'shana Babi Shalayim, not just a wish, but a commitment to get there. That's how we've gotten here. And that's the only way that we're all going to get here. So I want to bless you and ask you to bless me. Hashem should help us. That we should be able to see the incredible potential We should be able to really get a feel for what it means, what redemption looks like, what it looked like then, and what it's going to look like in the future. Hashem should bless us that each and every one of us should be zech, should merit our personal redemptions and our national redemption speedily and in our days. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful Pesach. 
and a good Shabbos. This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com or search on iTunes, Ari Goldwag.